it's summer and welcome to my vlog for the survive the night readathon this readathon is being hosted by my friend jesse who runs the sleep when i'm dead book club this readathon is celebrating three years of her book club and i'm really excited for this week i helped jesse make one of her graphics for this readathon which was the map that has all the reading prompts on it i had a ton of fun making it and i just love her concept for this readathon every landmark on the map is corresponding with a reading prompt and if you're not done reading the book that corresponds with a certain reading prompt by the time the killer comes around to it then you die and the killer will attack certain spots on the map at random there is a way to come back from the dead though and it's by i think either posting a picture or a video of how you died on discord and honestly i'm really hoping that i die because i have a really funny idea for including my cats in my fictional death. There are a lot of different locations on this map and you could pick a book for each one, but I only picked four books for this TBR. So I'll kind of go over what books I'm going to try to read for this readathon. I don't think I'm actually gonna try to read all four of these. I'm just gonna have them as options. So for the lake location on the map, the reading prompt is to read a book with water or a body of water on the cover. So for that, I'm going to be trying to read The Gathering Dark. It's edited by Tori Bogolino, but it's an anthology of folk horror by a bunch of different authors. I think when I counted, there were 10 different stories. So if I read a couple of stories every day, I should be able to finish this. The cover of this one is mainly what intrigued me. And also Alison Saft is one of the authors that is included. And it's kind of hard to tell, but there is a river going underneath this bridge on the cover. So that's my body of water. And then for the bathhouse location, it's to read a book with a body part on the cover. So for that, I'm going to be reading Immortal Dark by Tigest Gurma. I don't know for sure how to say that, but look how pretty this edition is. These sprayed edges are crazy. I have the audiobook for this one from Libro FM, so I'll be able to tandem read this if I want to. It's kind of a bigger book, so I'm not totally sure if I'll get to it during the readathon. This one is supposed to be Dark Academia with Vampires. There's like secret societies. It says a lost heiress, a soulless vampire, a secret drenched in blood, and I'm very excited to read it. For the mess hall, the prompt is to read a book where you unscramble the letters and you spell a type of food out of the cover. So for this prompt, I'm going to be reading Apprentice to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. This is a new release that I'm really excited to get to. I loved the first book in this series and I'm really excited to continue. Out of all of these letters that spell Apprentice to the Villain, I was able to make apple, tortilla, and vanilla after I unscrambled all the words and put them back together. The first book in this series follows a girl named Evie who, because she is desperate, becomes the personal assistant to this villain. He's the main like big bad guy in her town and it's just like ridiculous and cheesy and over the top but in a good way. It's so silly but it's also like slow burn and I'm just really ready for the sequel. And then for the bonfire location, it's to read a hot new release. So I could have counted Apprentice to the Villain for this one, but instead I'm going to try and read A Dark and Drowning Tide by Alison Saft. This one just barely came out on the 10th and I had an arc for it and didn't get to it in time. So I really want to try and read this during the readathon. This is my number one priority. This is the one I'm going to start with tonight. This one is giving me like dark, magic, gothic vibes. So far, it also is kind of like reminding me of Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies a little bit as far as the vibe. There are like fae and fairies in this. From what I can tell, I've only read one chapter. This one also has LGBTQ themes in it. I'm pretty sure that one of the main characters is trans. The description says, a sharp-tongued folklorist must pair up with her academic rival to solve their mentor's murder in this lush and enthralling sapphic fantasy romance from the New York Times bestseller of A Far Wilder Magic. There is Lorelai, who's a folklorist with a quick temper and an even quicker wit. And she's on an expedition with six eccentric nobles in search of a fabled spring. Her beloved mentor is murdered. And the only person that Lorelai knows must be innocent is her longtime academic rival, Sylvia Von Wolf. Sylvia is definitely a little bit like happier and more bubbly than Lorelai is. And she definitely doesn't have any kind of sense of self-preservation kind of like Emily Wilde, where she will like purposefully fall into fairy traps so that she can study them. And I'm really excited to see their banter and their relationship because it sounds like it's gonna be kind of like enemies to lovers 
or at least rivals to lovers. So these are the four books that I might be potentially reading this week. I need to take my first picture for the readathon. The prompt for today is to post a picture of your TBR. So I need to set these up and take a picture really quick. I also need to check in on Discord at what location I'm starting at. You have to check in so that way people know who's there when the killer gets there. I guess there's also supposed to be hints about where the killer is going to be next. Like on social media, she's going to be posting like little hints for where the killer will be. Before we take the TBR picture though, I wanted to do a little bit of a haul. I got a few things at Home Goods because I recently started working there. This is my second week, I think. I'm one of the people that puts all of the inventory out on the shelves. So for like two weeks now, I've been like seeing all the cute stuff being put out and I finally decided to like shop some of it. It's my mom's birthday today, so I wanted to get a few things to send to her. So the first thing that I picked out is this really cute little mushroom mug. The top comes off and I just think it's really cute. She also really likes mushrooms and likes foraging and stuff. So I think this will be perfect for her. And then I also got her this cute little tiny picture frame. I also got one for me too because I couldn't resist. I just think it's so cute. And then I also got her a birthday card there. This isn't from Home Goods, but I thrifted this fossil bag probably like two years ago and I just haven't used it, but it's in really good condition and she loves the brand fossil. So I thought I would send this to her too. And then I also got a candle for me. I've been eyeing this one ever since we put them out. It's this really cute one from, I think, Rachel Zoe. I love the color and the little ghosts that are on it. It has a really faint scent and I don't know how to describe what it smells like, but it smells good. <laughs> I really liked this because it kind of reminded me of the anthropology glasses that you can get. Also the ghosts are very fitting because Jessie's like mascot for Sleep When I'm Dead is a ghost. I think I might try to use this in my TBR picture. That's my little haul. In addition to working at Home Goods, I also have a part-time seasonal job at Anthropology, So I'm very excited for that. I'm also very excited for the discount. I'll probably be talking more about it in like future vlogs and stuff because I don't start officially until next, next week or two weeks, but I'm really excited. So my plans for tonight are to take the picture, post it, and then I'm actually going to be one of the people on Jessie's reading sprints tonight. She invited all of her previous Sleep When I'm Dead co-hosts to join the live. So I'm gonna try to read as much as I can of A Dark and Drowning Tide. I also think it's really funny that three out of my four books have the word dark in the title. I didn't do it on purpose, but I feel like it's a good theme for a slasher inspired readathon. <laughs> It's a few hours later. Reading sprints were so much fun. I had the best time and it was so nice to have like some designated time to physically sit down and read. After sprints, Travis and I went and got Taco Bell for dinner, which has been my like hyper fixation comfort food lately. My cats have the zooms right now. So that's what you're probably hearing in the background. <laughs> so we had that for dinner and then we watched our show while we ate. We're currently watching The Midnight Club. It's by the same guy that made Bly Manor and Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. I've already seen Haunting of Hill House a couple of years ago and loved it. And then we watched Bly Manor a couple of weeks ago. And then The Fall of the House of Usher after that. 
and now we've moved on to the midnight club so yeah those are all the non-bookish things that we've been up to tonight as far as my book though i made it to 13 percent during reading sprints and i think when we started i was only like three percent in or something i think i said earlier that i had only read a chapter before starting the vlog so it was nice to get more into the story and to get to know the characters more. I think earlier I also said that I was late reading this and it was already published, but I double checked the publishing date and it's not until the 17th, which is on Tuesday. So I have a few days to read this. <laughs> so I'm doing better than I thought. So far in the story, we've met all of the main people that are going on this expedition. We've kind of seen their dynamics within the group and like their relationships with each other. I'm pretty sure that this is based off of like German folklore or it just has like German influences especially with like the names. I really wish that this came with a pronunciation guide and maybe the final copy does. But so far we have Lorelai and Sylvia, the two main characters. We have a character named Ludwig who I think is a botanist. The head of this expedition is their professor named Professor Zeigler. And then I can't remember everybody else's names, but there's a mean girl, a war general guy, and there's a girl who's an astronomer. And she's more soft-spoken and private and keeps to herself. They all went to university together and they've all been picked for this expedition. And they're doing it for the king who is wanting to find this magical spring the king i think is like 25 so he's like a younger guy and then all of the other college students are in their 20s as well they all just barely had like a banquet with the king to like announce their expedition and to kind of like celebrate it and now i think it's nighttime and they are all meeting up at the docks to go on board this steamboat from the synopsis i know that something is going to go down while they're on this boat so far it's still giving emily wilde's encyclopedia fairies but this boat scene I feel like is gonna kind of give me like the mummy vibes a little bit like when they're on that boat and they get attacked. I love this kind of a setting and this kind of a vibe so I'm totally here for it. The one thing that I'm having a hard time with is the world building which is something that I also had a problem with in A Fragile Enchantment by this author. It's like she's trying to do too much, like too much backstory, too much history and none of it really feels very relevant and it doesn't flow and it doesn't really fit into the story very well. This has so many like little intricate things that are happening. From what I can tell, there are two groups of people. One of them is treated better in society and they have open use of magic. And then the second group of people are oppressed by society and they also have magic, but it's kind of like looked down upon to use your magic. The other group doesn't like seeing that this lesser group has the same abilities as them. Lorelai, the dark brooding one, she's from the second group, the bad group, and she has magic but she kind of keeps it on the DL. But there's like all of this history and stuff between those two groups and there are so many like little side tangents that are happening and it just really doesn't feel like it's doing anything. Like I just kind of wish that this would have been more simplified. I'm really hoping that the world building kind of gets left behind as we get more like into the real plot of the story and them on the expedition. Also, I think earlier I said that this has trans rep in it. I don't really know where I got that idea because I was looking more into it and it is queer, it is sapphic, but I don't think there are trans characters in it. <laughs> So I'm sorry if that was kind of misleading when I said that, but there is not a trans character in this so far from what I can tell. I'm very excited to keep reading and I think I'm going to try to read a little bit more tonight. Happy day two of the readathon. I've had a pretty busy day today. Travis and I went and ran some errands this morning and I feel so accomplished. This job, I have to wake up really early in the morning for it. My shifts are as early as 5 a.m. <laughs> and so since that's kind of my new normal for waking up, I woke up at like 7.30 this morning after having like a full night's rest. Cause listen, I tried to stay awake and read more of my book, but I didn't make it very long. I fell asleep so fast. So I'm not that much farther in a dark and drowning tide. So anyway, went to bed early last night, woke up early today and got so much done. It was very nice. <laughs> 
I can see why people are morning people now because you just get so much done. But the main thing that I really needed to get done today was I needed to go shoe shopping because I needed a new pair of tennis shoes. At work, I'm basically like speed walking all day. I don't know if I already said this, but I'm one of the people that puts out merchandise at Home Goods, and we have these huge carts that are just full of inventory, and we're supposed to empty two of them an hour and get everything on the sales floor. So you have to be kind of quick. And I have a really old pair of tennis shoes that just like don't have very much support. So my feet have been killing me the past couple of weeks. So I did a little bit of research and decided that I really wanted a pair of Hoka's. I know that they're really popular. They're also really expensive, but I figured it was a good investment since it'll like really be helping my feet to feel better when I'm at work. So I ended up getting these. I don't know if it's coming across on camera, but they're pink. Of course they're already like pretty dirty i need to like wipe these down i wore them out of the store because i wanted to start breaking them in immediately so i need to wipe them down a little bit but i'm pretty sure this style is called the bondi eights or something like that i got an eight and a half i feel like i'm usually an eight so i had to size up a little bit i like the look of these a lot better though they have like this cool like kind of just thicker platform. And I also liked the colorways a lot better. These ones have gotten a lot of reviews saying that they take a little bit longer to break in because I guess the arch is really high in these so it can kind of hurt your arch. But they actually felt pretty comfortable when I was wearing them around today. And I think that I'll be able to break them in pretty quickly. But these feel really like solid and stable and just really soft on my feet. So I'm very excited to wear these. I also just think they're cute. So yeah, anyway, after getting those, we went to the car wash and cleaned my car because it was really messy. And then after that, we went to Target because we needed to pick up a couple of things. Also, while I was there, I of course had to get a mug. He just looks so derpy and cute. Like, I just love it. Also at Target, I got some wine. This is like the cheapest wine ever. This brand is like $5. I really like their pink Moscato. So I decided I would try just their regular Moscato. So maybe I'll have some wine tonight while I read. And then I have one more thing to show you. I feel like so far this video has just been like me hauling stuff. I got a power drill and it's pink. <laughs> like, of course, if there's a pink option, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> We've needed a power drill for so long, but I always just put it off because I thought it was going to be really expensive. This was like $20 on Amazon and it had great reviews. So I was like, I just have to get this. So I'm very excited about this. And I feel like that's how you know that you're an adult is when you get excited about buying power tools or like appliances and stuff. Really excited about this. <laughs> anyway though, as far as like readathon stuff, like I said, I didn't really read very much more of A Dark and Drowning Tide, but this morning while I was getting ready, I did actually start Apprentice to the Villain on audio because I usually have a physical book and an audiobook going at the same time because I usually am trying to multitask and I just get most of my reading done through audiobooks. I think I'm reading that one for the mess hall. So I think I could kind of bounce between the bonfire and the mess hall if I wanted to, to avoid the killer. But like I said yesterday, I'm trying to get killed because I want to make a funny video of how I die. Speaking of that, let's listen to the hint for today to see where the killer might go. Every day, Jesse has been posting like a phone call voice message from the killer and it kind of has hints about where they might be hitting next so you can try to avoid them if you want. Jessie is so creative with coming up with stuff for readathons. Like she literally made a complete like audio recording pretending to be the killer and posting it. I just think that's like so cool. She just like has gone above and beyond for this. In a bustling place where people meet, where daily rituals seem so sweet. I linger quietly out of sight, taking my victim in the dead of night. Along with the laughter or smiles and glee, a shadow hides and that is me. In this plan where many meet, I plan my strike, swift and discreet. Okay, there's a lot of different ways we could go with that. Daily rituals, a place where people meet. That is making me think that it might be one of like the cabins, like the mess hall, the bathhouse, the main cabin, because like a daily ritual is like eating, so it could be the mess hall, or a daily ritual is like taking a shower, brushing your teeth, so it could be the bathhouse. Saying that it's a place where people go and meet up, makes me think mess hall because that's like where people get together but also part of me is kind of thinking like could it be the bonfire so both of the books that i'm reading are in danger but also like i said i want to get killed so this could be kind of fun <laughs> and i think we're gonna find out where the killer is in about an hour so i'll have to keep you updated on if i die or not right now i'm currently checked in at the bonfire so if the killer goes to the bonfire i'm dead
So far this book is the same energy and the same vibe as the first one, so I'm loving that. It's very cheesy and just cute, but also has those dark elements to it. It's definitely the same vibe as like Ella Enchanted or My Lady Jane, where it's ridiculous and over the top, but just like so lovable and wholesome. So you just have to know going into it to like not take it too seriously. So I'm really excited to continue in the audiobook. I actually have a lot of client work that I need to try and get done today, so I'm going to keep listening to it while I do some client work. I also think that one of the things that I want to try and work on today is a little animation that I can use as a transition between days for this video of a little campsite with a campfire and the moon and stuff in a tent and then the moon going down and the sun coming up to kind of show that like it's the next day. I think that could be kind of fun. So maybe I'll try to like film the process of me drawing that. So happy day three of the readathon. I meant to do an update last night, but it just got really late and I didn't feel like talking to the camera. I got the majority of my client work done, which was super nice. And then I also made some graphics for this vlog, which you've already seen. While I was doing all of those things last night, I listened to more of Apprentice to the Villain. I made it to chapter 54, which is 68% of the way through the book. So I got quite a bit of reading done last night. I'm still just having a lot of fun with this story and with the world. I'm really liking Evie's character development in this one. I know that updates for this book are kind of boring because I just can't really say a whole lot about it since it's a sequel, but I'm having a good time. There's a frog character in this series named Kingsley that's one of my favorite characters, and I feel like we're gonna find out a lot more about him in this book. There's been kind of like some foreshadowing for that, so we're just kind of getting to know all of the characters a little bit better, and also more about like what the big bad in this world is, like what the problem that they're trying to solve is. I also forgot to check where the killer stopped at last night, so I figured we could check on that together and see if I died. Oh, okay. The killer saw you outside the mess hall and attacked, so I'm not dead. Let's listen to the killer's phone call for day three. In a refuge where you lay your head, where dreams are spun and fears are shed, I enter softly without a sound. In these quarters, my deeds are found. In this haven of solitude and peace, my dark intentions never cease. Find me where you feel most secure, for in your refuge, I am the lure. Okay, so the killer's coming to the cabins. I'm like 100% sure. <laughs> so luckily, I'm not at the cabins. I'm staying checked in at the bonfire. <laughs> I did end up finishing Apprentice to the Villain and I really liked it. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I gave the first book five stars and I think the only reason this one isn't going to be a full five is just because it kind of suffered from middle book syndrome because there's definitely going to be a third book that's left on a cliffhanger. It was still really cute and had like everything in it that I wanted. I found myself getting confused with why they were doing the things they were doing and what the big problem they needed to solve was. Like I just don't even really know or understand or remember what the main conflict in this book is or like in the series what it is also i thought that we were going to get a lot more information about kingsley but the information we got about him was something that i thought we were already aware of but they made it seem like it was a big deal and like it was information that we didn't have previously but i'm like almost like i was already going about my reading experience thinking that that's that that was fact that's so cryptic i'm sorry but I don't know. I just, there wasn't really anything like really surprising or shocking in this. I also was kind of hoping that we'd get a little bit more payoff as far as the romance. This is like so slow burn, but honestly, I kind of love that it's slow burn. I really like that it's not going to feel like insta love. It's taking them a long time to come to terms with their feelings and to show 
their feelings. I was hoping for a little bit more payoff, but I'm not that mad about it though. So yeah, I really liked it. I still haven't read any more of A Dark and Drowning Tide. I'm hoping that I'll be able to make some time tonight to sit down and read it, but I honestly don't know for sure. I really need to tidy up the kitchen and do dishes, so I think while I'm doing that, I'm going to start the audiobook for Immortal Dark. This edition just really is so pretty. Oh my gosh, I hadn't looked at the naked hardback yet. And then also the end pages. That is a very detailed map. That is amazing. I know that I already gave you a kind of synopsis of this book, but it's Dark Academia. I think enemies to lovers or rivals to lovers. It has vampires. I am very ready to start this book. I think this whole video is just me doing talking clips in the same exact spot. <laughs> happy day four of the readathon though. I just got off work and I'm so happy to be home. I'm definitely ready just to like chill and try and read tonight. I also think that Jesse's doing um, a live show tonight at five o'clock my time, so in like an hour. But I wanted to give a little update on Immortal Dark. I also originally mispronounced the author's name. It's Tigist Grima. Right now in the audiobook, I am at 27%. And I don't really know how I'm feeling about this one. I will say that the audiobook is really well done. I'm really enjoying the narrators and how it's produced. But the story itself just isn't really my favorite so far. The main character is pretty unlikable. I think that she's meant to be unlikable. And a lot of the time I like an unlikable character, but for some reason she's just like not working for me. I feel like she's doing things just for the sake of doing them. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself with plot and stuff, but she at one point destroys a bunch of priceless, really old historical artifacts just to get back at somebody. And I'm just like, why? Was that really the only thing you could think of to get back at them? You just destroyed literal history that there like aren't duplicates of. Like, girl, like just, just why? This world that we're learning about is really interesting though. The main character's name is Kidan. I think everyone in this book is like college age. They're all going to this kind of magical university, but Kidan is a human and she has a sister named June who recently got like taken or kidnapped or something. Kidon doesn't know what's happened to her. She doesn't know if she's dead or alive. She has done some bad things to try and get to the bottom of the mystery of where her sister is. She's kind of in trouble with the law because of that. All of her family besides hopefully June is gone and Kidon has been named as the next person in line to inherit her family's house. And it's not just like the house itself, it's like there are houses in this world, kind of like ninth house, like someone's family house. And it kind of sounds like these houses, like the actual manors themselves are kind of magical and they can be imbued with magic by the owners of the house. And also in this world, vampires kind of work with humans. I kind of think they have a little bit of like a symbiotic relationship going on. The vampires get to live with the humans in their house. The humans kind of like hire them almost. And I think that the vampires are kind of bound to their human and they can feed from that human. And it's like all consensual and stuff. The only way that you get to do that though is by graduating from this university and belonging to a house. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of information that's been thrown at me so far, so I'm trying to keep all of it straight. For the first time in history, a family has named the vampire as the next in line to inherit the house, which is Kidan's family. For some reason, her parents, I think, left it to a vampire. So I guess she's technically second in line. I said she was in line, like first in line. In order for a person to claim the home, they need to live there for like 28 consecutive days or something. And if they're unable to do that, then they won't inherit it. But also like if another family member moves into the house, like that family member is more likely to be the one to inherit it. It's really messy. There's a lot of information, but basically she is going to be, it's like forced proximity. She's going to be forced to live in her family's house with this vampire that she is pretty sure is the one who kidnapped her sister. So she's kind of getting to know everyone on campus. She's trying to find out more about this vampire that she's living with. And they are already like brutally at each other's throats. And she is like, not 
going down without a fight and she's playing dirty <laughs> like literally injuring herself and like literally reporting it to the higher ups and being like he is attacking me i also think that the way that vampires are made in this world is really interesting if you want to be turned into a vampire you basically have to go and convince another vampire to give up immortality and transfer it to you so it's not like one person can just make a bunch of vampires by having them drink their blood or something it's very unique to any other vampire story that i've read or just seen in media and stuff there's just a lot going on and i'm not really attached to any of the characters i'm pretty far into the book like i'm almost 30 percent of the way through the book and i just kind of feel like i might want to soft dnf it like i might come back to this again in the future but for right now there's just other things that i want to be reading more so i think i'm gonna take a break from this one i feel really bad especially because i have this like really pretty edition of it but it's just not working out for me right now so i'm just gonna keep physically reading a dark and drowning tide i would like to have another audiobook to listen to though in place of immortal dark and i actually need to reread bunny by mona awad for an upcoming certain podcast episode that i'm very excited about we're going to be like discussing it in depth though and it's been long enough since i've read it that i need a refresher and i also just want to try and like pick it apart a little bit more than i did the first time kind of look into the metaphors a little bit more I want to try and kind of take notes a little bit while I'm reading it. So I might kind of slip that into my TBR, the rest of the readathon. I just got my first kettle so i had to try it out this is still way too hot to drink but isn't my mug just so cute and i feel like it's perfect for this readathon since it's hosted by jesse slash sleep when i'm dead book club it's a few days later so the readathon has been over but i refuse to finish this video without at least finishing one other book so i have an update for you also markle is here I took a break from Bunny because I didn't want to finish it too quickly. I was getting to the point where I only had a couple of hours left, so I decided to put a pause on that. And then I purchased the audiobook for A Dark and Drowning Tide because it was just taking me forever to get through. I was having a hard time finding time to sit down and physically read. And so for the sake of finishing this video and also just reading that book, I figured audiobook would be the best way to go. But I am sadly, I think, going to rate it two stars. Which, if you would have told me that a week ago, I would not have believed you. I was really convinced that this book was going to be five stars. Between the cover, the synopsis, the writing style, I really thought this was going to be a new favorite, but it really was just slow and confusing. I just kept zoning out while reading both the ebook and the audiobook. I really didn't care about the characters very much. I did really like Lorelai and Sylvia's romance. I wish there would have been a little bit more of that or that their romance could have happened in a different story. The plot of this one sounded so interesting, but the way that it was executed just wasn't for me. I can tell that Alison Saft is a good writer. She writes really beautifully, but I don't really like how she tries to incorporate like a lot of history into her stories. Not real history, but her fantasy worlds, like fictional history. I feel like she tries to do too much world building for a standalone book. I know that I already kind of like touched on this in an earlier clip, but it just kind of got worse as I was reading, especially because all of these characters have an even more elaborate history than just going to school together for years. And so we didn't experience that like history with them. Like I guess they all fought in this war or something like years prior. And so there's all this history between all of them and it's just getting retold to us like as an afterthought. I just feel like the book was trying to be too many things and trying to do too many things. I feel like I already said that earlier in a clip too, so I'm sorry that I'm being repetitive. The vibes and the imagery of the book were awesome though, but I think that and then Lorelai and Sylvia are the only things that I really enjoyed about this one. Markle is eating, so I'm sorry about the crunching in the background. <laughs> and this is like the second book from Alison Saft that I haven't really like loved. I really liked A Fragile Enchantment after reading it. I think I gave it like four stars, but now I could probably bump it down to three. And A Far Wilder Magic by Alison Saft is on my list of books that I need to read by the end of the year. 
and now I'm like really nervous about reading that one and I'm kind of putting it off now. I also am putting it off because I tried to start it a couple weeks ago on audio and I did not like the audiobook. The voices that the narrator was doing were terrible so I'm gonna have to physically read it which means even more opportunity for me to be like I'm not feeling this and then just put it down and forget about it. So I don't know. I feel like I'm scared but I'll cross that bridge when I get there. So even though that one didn't really work out I still really liked Apprentice to the Villain so cute exactly what i wanted and i just had a lot of fun participating in the readathon chatting with everyone and being on reading sprints and stuff jesse put together the most fun readathon and i'm so glad that i was able to be a part of it if you made it to the end of the video leave a frog emoji in the comments for kingsley thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one Appalachian sunrise